So although this diffusion map looks good, but it has several practical limitations. Uh, in particular, when the data set is big and the noise. First question about big. Look, we have to do eigen decomposition, but you know that eigen decomposition, eigen decomposition is very expensive. The computational complexity is always like cubic. It is n raised to power log seven, which is about n raised to power 2.81, which is in practice not practical at all. So people have several ideas. For example, they say, hey, how about if you use KNN or use epsilon ball so that the matrix you construct is sparse? Okay, if it is sparse, then the computational time is faster, right? We know that if it's sparse, okay, then the computational time can be reduced to n squared plus epsilon. Epsilon can be small, but a constant can become super gigantic depending on epsilon. So technically it is slightly above quadratic computational time, which is again, not very healthy. Okay, but it is good only if the data is clean. If data is not clean, you will have some troubles. The trouble is about neighbor searching. The neighbor is not robust to noise. Why? Look, if you have noisy data, okay, and the data Xi is contaminated by independent noise, because Ci, then you see Xi and Xj distance can be written in this way. And suppose we say, hey, because Ci is just IID. Right, then you get chi square distribution. And in, when noise exists, this is non central chi square. But central or non central doesn't matter. Right? The mean of central or non central chi square always has order p when p is large. And the standard deviation is of order square root of p, which tells you that the noise will dominate, the noise will dominate, so that if the distance is very small, then sorry, it is, it is destroyed by the noise, and there's no hope you can find the true neighbors, so that everything destroyed, everything collapses. Another approach is, how about then we do subsampling? N points that's too many. So let's do the subsampling and then plus extrapolation in the end. There is a very common approach called nice strong extension. To do down sampling, and you evaluate diffusion map, which is fast, and then you extrapolate to every place. But turns out it is only good for spectral clustering. Only good for spectral clustering because you can only recover the first few eigen functions you cannot recover higher order eigenfunctions because of the loss of geometric information. So you lose information, you don't want it. So ideally, a good algorithm should get rid of these two limitations, but you can get everything. That will be a good algorithm. What is the spectral clustering? Oh, spectral clustering is mm. a way you run k-min to cluster the points, but you do it uh, so after you embed the points using the spectral crosswise. Cross yes. Yeah. So it is many count it many counts are uh, triggers inequality. Okay, and this kind of um, uh, uh, isoperimetric inequality uh, to to guarantee that eigenfunctions and eigen, uh, eigenstructure can help you to enhance the clustering uh, tool, which we will not discuss today. Because we want to have more interest in the whole geometry. Once you have whole geometry, you can do spatial clustering. But if you can do spatial clustering, you only see what? Betty zero, essentially. You get Betty zero information, which is very topological, but we want geometry. We don't want just topological information. By, by the way, you assume that manifold is compact. Yes, always compact. So if you um, 
give up the uh, compactness, then the convergence of diffusion not be, is not guaranteed. No, it's guaranteed. It, it, still it is guaranteed. guaranteed. It's guaranteed. So the, what is the problem? An apple for the non-compact non case. Oh, oh, for a non-compact case, uh, we don't know how to, at least I don't know how to do it at this moment. So if it is compact, then I can prove it. I know how to prove it. I know I have the result. But if it is non-compact, well, I haven't thought about it, and I don't know how to how to how to how to proceed. Uh, the, future, the construction the future must be the same. Technically, it's the same. Yes, but as as we discussed uh, before, uh, what do you mean by sampling a non-compact manifold? Okay, okay, okay. That, that, that right. Yes. What does it mean? Right. You go to infinite. But how can you save infinite in your computer, right? And uh, even if we have a way to do it, to mimic the sampling, okay? For example, you can always take log, right? You can always do compact verification. Then how to unwrap it and do things? Uh, well, it is an interesting problem, but I haven't had time to sort of to think about it. So I don't have an answer for you. Yeah, so that's what I said is an open question. Yeah, but if it's compact, then we know quite a lot. Yeah. But if it's non-compact, we have limited know, knowledge. At which point I mean, the compactness assumption matters? And right now I see that it's something. Yeah, same thing is one way. Yeah, one thing. Okay. It's one thing. And, and we need to also use the discrete, discrete spectrum property because it is a Laplace operator. We count up. Laplace operator on compact manifold has discrete spectrum. And eigen eigenspaces are all finite with only accumulation points in the infinite. But if it is Laplacian on a non compact manifold, well, the spectrum is continuous. Just imagine you have Laplacian second order derivative, second order operator on R. What is the spectrum? Everywhere. Then I don't know how to prove things. At least I don't know how to do it right now. Okay, so this application. Work. Well, you can do it. You can say it. Yes, maybe it works. Maybe you can say R, ah, you complify it and get it to S1. Okay, and then you have to wrap it back. Well, sounds okay. Yeah, sounds okay. But I haven't thought about it. Yeah. Yeah, so I cannot answer it or tell you, yes, it is what we can do now. No, I don't know. Yeah. And also, even if we can prove it in practice, how to operate it. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, because in general, even if the data is non-compact, what do you mean by, okay, I have a non-compact data set and we do complication without knowing the manifold. What does it mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, if it is R, then I know how to sample it and everything and I know how to complexify, complex, well, com com complexify it and maybe the sample, yeah, well, but, hmm. Okay. Okay, good. So let's continue. Yeah, there are many questions I can, unfortunately I cannot. Most of the questions you ask, I, my, my, my answer might be negative because I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, our solution uh, is, uh, is called diffusion via landmarks. That is, if I have two points, xi, I want to diffuse to xj, in diffusion map, what we do is we just diffuse on it, right? Go to XJ. But now I tell you, no, this is not a good. This is not good. What I say is, I want to choose a set of points, which we call landmarks. And right now, if I want to diffuse from XI to XJ, I force the diffusion to first go to all the landmarks and then go to XJ. That is the diffusion is constrained. The diffusion needs to go through some surrogate or landmarks before it goes to the destination. Okay, that is the basic idea. We have some geometrical constraints when we run the diffusion. So the proposed algorithm on a high dimensional data set called Rosland is based on this idea. And Rosland speaks like robust 
and the scalable landmark diffusion. So you can see that we want to run diffusion by landmark, and we want its algorithm to be robust to noise and scalable for large database. That's why it's called ROSN. And the algorithm is actually very simple. Actually, just feel nice. If you see the public, I share the code on nine, and if you check the code, you will see there's only four nines, five nines. That's super, super simple. What you do is first, you build up a thin and a tall matrix called WR, and what you put inside IJ's entry is the affinity between XI and the YJ. Very simple. You can construct it very quickly. And then this guy describes the affinities between beta and landmarks. Second step, you construct WR outer product. And this outer product means the affinities among data points. That is, you have diffusion or affinity. You compare, you compare XI and XJ, you compare XI and landmarks, and the landmarks with XJ, which is a very common trick when you do approximation, right? You use something you know to be the intermittent point, and you bound everything by triangular inequality. That's usually what you do. I mean, most of the time we don't, we don't have too many tools. So that is what you do. And then you do row sum. You do row sum. And that is the diagonal matrix B. And then you calculate, we call it W, and you evaluate B minus health WR. You evaluate SBD. What is the intuition of doing this? It is actually very intuitive because D inverse W, D inverse W, this matrix is actually similar to D health, D minus health, WR, WR transpose D minus health. Where this is a symmetric matrix, which is outer product of D minus health, WR, right? Outer product. So it's identity composition can be evaluated by singular value decomposition of each part. And then you just put D minus health back. This will be the eigenvector. And then you just do something like before in diffusion map, we do the embedding. This is called Rosten embedding. And uh, you have the result. And turns out, turns out, this very, very simple algorithm works super nice in many applications. Before I show you some preliminary results, let me show you, tell you what's benefit. First, you do not need to construct sparsity. Everything is replaced by landmarks. So no neighbor searching is needed. So you get a full matrix, but this full matrix is thin and the tall. How do you choose the landmark? Good question. And we will, I will answer the question, this question in a bit. In practice, we sample it uniformly from the existing data set. But in practice, you can design it. And how, how to design it? I will give you some answers later. And in further practice, you can even spend money to design a clean data set so that overall embedding becomes better, which I will show you again later. And the second is no longer nice from everything, all points are used. So you do not lose too much geometric details. And more importantly, the computational time is our benefit. If you choose M, the number of landmarks to be n raised to power beta, then the computational complexity is one plus two beta. And if you use KLN or epsilon ball for diffusion map is a two plus epsilon, the nice strong is of this order. So if you choose beta to be less than one health, then you see Rosen 
the computational time is almost the same as line strong. You get quite a lot of benefits. So if you have one million points, one million points, you can try one million points and you build up one million by one million metrics in your computer, for example, my computer, see what you will get. I mean, will, your computer will crash, right? In this small computer, maybe 10,000 or 100,000 is the maximum points you can tolerate. Right, my computer is 2017, which is considered old nowadays. But even the computer you can buy today, how many points you can tolerate? 100,000, maybe? Mm. And how much time it will take? Three hours, maybe? But in this small computer, 1 million points, I mentioned is 300. If beta is 0 0.45, only takes three minutes to finish the decomposition, which is on our, is on our benefit. So this kind of algorithm, there exists some variations, but, and the closest one is this guy uh, in Archer 2014, but the main difference is how you design the diffusion, and we will have some comparison in a bit, so that, and, and they do not have theoretical proofs. And uh, for spectral clustering I mentioned, well, there are many, uh, many papers. I mean, all in neural IPs or ICMLOs, uh, conference papers, they found that using the landmarks idea is quite beneficial. beneficial. But what I showed you, what I will show you is if the diffusion is properly designed, okay, then you can further recover the geometry, which was not ever considered By the way, in the past. The paper apply the technique to the uh, same bigger uh, trans. No, 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 no. The, the theoretical. Yep. They apply um, some other themes, okay, whatever they are. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is a benchmark result. Very, very simple one. I think today, if you see people working on this database, it's not, it's not new at all. It's a, a missed database, Seven, uh, 70,000 images. But you can see that if you use diffusion map, it will take 1,000 thousand minutes, very, very long time. But if you use uh, gross length, only one minute, one second, four seconds, 15 seconds, which is even, which is comparable with nice strong extension. Okay. And we can also evaluate the quantification, how accurate we can classify different digits. And uh, I also consider some noises. In this very, very simple application, that is, a, that is the result. When beta is very small, you start to see that Rosland already outperforms Nystrom. Okay, but it's not comparable with diffusion map, although it's very fast. When you take beta to be what? 0 0.5, then you can see that the gap is gigantic. And the diffusion map and the Rosland, they perform relatively similar. Okay, and not to mention, oh, uh, you have uh, uh, yeah, nice strong or other algorithms. For example, this LOL algorithm is the algorithm like my like the, the reviewers forced us to compare, and we did a comparison. And uh, well, we actually to even cheat for their algorithm to use the brown truth and so on, so that we can boost it to something reasonable. Okay, and uh, this is a noisy data. You can see that in the noisy data, diffusion map. It's okay, but the performance reduces. Uh, and the uh, Rosland is here, okay, which performs relatively like PCA. But if you run diffusion map, or uh, if you take beta to be health, you can even see that Rosland outperforms diffusion map, which tells you that Rosland has the benefit of being robust or more robust to noise. In that case, the data is, you know, like a pixel. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. If, if it is I mean, 600 plus pixel, then your six P is, your P is 600. Right. And you just view it, this image as a vector. Yeah, you vectorize it by putting all the columns together and you do the evaluation. That's usually the very basic thing. 
And nowadays, people may say, okay, this is a density function, and we can consider optimal transport. Okay, use optimal transport to replace L2 distance. There's another idea. That's what I meant by matrix design. Matrix design. You can consider different matrices, but we will not go into there today. 